Hello, everyone. I'm Miss Monica from the Howard County Library System, the Glenwood Branch. I'm here today with Miss Christie and Mr. Alistair. They are behind the scenes helping, so I wanted to give a big shout out and a thank you to them. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here today, too, for our next STEAM Saturday. And STEAM Saturday is our monthly, sometimes twice a month, session where we learn about science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And we do that through fun activities and learning that you can do at home. So remember, this is pre-recorded. So if you want to pause at any time and run and get supplies, or if you want to rewatch something or watch it again, you are more than welcome to do that. And also remember, I'm going to try to use supplies that you have at home. If you don't have exactly the same supplies that I do, you can uh, use something you do have. You can substitute. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to explore the science of flowers today. Does anybody have any pretty flowers maybe on your table or in a vase or maybe you planted some spring flowers this spring and they're blooming um, now that it's summer? Yes? Oh, I'm so glad. I love flowers. I think they're beautiful. Um, they add a lot of cheer to our homes and gardens. Um, they also have some other purposes. Can you think of something that we use flowers for? Does that anybody say food? Yes. Who enjoys strawberries? I know I do. Strawberries actually start as a flower and then they turn to the fruit. So we eat things that come from flowers. Um, some flowers are even edible. I've seen them on cakes lately. They're so beautiful as, as, as cake decorations. Uh, we also need them for their pollen. Uh, bees, who likes honey? I like honey. So bees need pollen to make honey. So that's important. Other flowers or other birds and uh, insects also need pollen and then pollen helps um, flowers grow. Pollen can also make you, if you notice my eyes are a little watery today, um, with the pollen next to me and outside. So uh, yeah, pollen can be a good thing and sometimes it can be a frustrating thing, but we do need pollen. Um, also, some beauty products are made with the flower, uh, flowers and also for healing. Um, lavender, it can be used as a, um, the smell of lavender is very relaxing. So sometimes people use that to alleviate stress. Periwinkle is a flower. I actually learned from one of our book suggestions that that is used to make um, something to help with fight cancer. So that's, that's really cool. Flowers are really useful and I'm glad that they're um, in our world. So flowers have different parts. I have one of these flowers right here. And I bet a lot of you know that there's a stem. And why do you think there's a stem? Does anybody know? So the stem brings the, fla the, the flower water from the soil. The, the water is gonna travel up the stem and into the rest of the flower, which includes, these are leaves, okay? Not all flowers have a lot of leaves or even leaves, but most do. And then, I don't know if you can see right here, you see the little brown part right here? Do you see that? So that's where the pollen is on the stamen, okay? These ones I think would have a lot of pollen, if I, especially if I took one of these and I kind of scrunched it, the, the pollen would come out. So there's those, okay? And these right here are geraniums. And I'll give you a little tip. If you ever heard of, if you have a green thumb, a green thumb, it, it refers to somebody that's really good at gardening and planting things. Um, if you don't have a green thumb, I'm going to admit I do not have a green thumb. I love the look of flowers. I love to try to plant them. And sometimes they just don't grow very well for me, but at least I try. Uh, but geraniums are one of my favorite flowers to plant because they're really forgiving if I forget to water them and they tend to bloom all summer long. So this is a geranium. Can you see that? And can you see right here, these little things right here? These are the buds. So that's a flower starting. It's all closed up. And when it like gets the sunlight and it gets water from the stem, it's gonna bloom and look like this one, okay? So, and like I said, I really love geraniums because they will 
bud and bloom all summer long um, and they're very forgiving. So you can see, and actually here's another one, look, that doesn't have any blooming petals on it. See it? That's really neat. So they also have roots and the roots are in the bottom. The one that I just showed you is a cut uh, flower, so we, we can't see the roots, um, but the roots are in the ground. And like I said, that helps get the nutrients from the soil and the water from the soil. That's why it's important to water your flowers. Um, but let's see if I can pull this up. I'm gonna use a paper plate um, and take this out of its pot and see if we can see some of the roots, which is kind of neat. So I haven't planted this one in my garden yet. I just got it at a plant sale at my son's school this weekend. So, ah, ready? This is kind of cool. Let me put it close. Do you see kind of those brown, like, like they look like vines almost? Can you see it? Those are the roots. And you can even see on the bottom, the soil is a little more moist. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom because I have been watering this, I remembered. <laughs> and it's been raining, so it's been helping me too with my, my geraniums. Um, and that's, you can see where the, the roots are, are heavily down on the bottom. And I actually really do need to plant this flower because um, you can see that the roots are, are really gravitating towards the bottom. It needs a little more room and a little more soil. So maybe tonight that will be my thing that I do is plant these. So that's the geranium. And another really interesting thing about flowers that I'll share is that they belong to flower families. And I learned this from um, one of our books that I'll suggest later. But just like we belong in families and we have our families, sometimes our families include our friends as well. And flowers, kind of like families, are alike in different ways. Like, is anybody tall like somebody in their family? Yep. Um, is somebody like likes a hobby that somebody else likes in their family? Yep, exactly. So flowers are kind of, they kind of group themselves together based on similarities. And um, there's their different uh, families. One is the daisy family, which includes uh, marigolds and sunflowers, some of my favorite flowers. Then there's the orchid family. I've never seen an orchid. Um, sometimes in the spring, people give orchids as gifts. They're absolutely stunning and beautiful flowers. Then there's one of my favorite, the fruity family. And can you guess why it's called a fruity family? Yep, those are those flowers that give us fruit like raspberries, cherries. Um, also roses are included in the fruity family. I did not realize that. I would have thought that they were in a different family, but they're actually in a fruity family, even though they don't give us fruit. And also almonds come from flowers as well. Does anybody like almonds? Some people are allergic to them, um, but if you can eat them, try them, and they actually come from a flower too. So learn that too today. Um, then we have the bulb family. Does anybody plant bulbs in the fall and then anticipate them growing in the spring? That's a bulb, uh, like our tulips, um, our lilies, they both grow from bulbs. Also, this one's a fun name. You're gonna wanna say this with me. There is the prickly family. Can you say prickly? Prickly, prickly, prickly. I feel like tickling somebody when I say prickly. But, um, and the prickly family, um, they have spines instead of leaves. Um, so like the cactus plant, um, that some of them do have flowers. They are part of the prickly family and they like dry environments like the desert. So not all flowers like a dry environment, but our prickly family flowers and cactus do. So then last but not least, we have the pea pod family. I like that name too. Can you guys say that? Pea pod. Um, and they are uh, sometimes our vegetables like sweet peas. And then there's also includes lentils and peanuts and chickpeas. They also come from a flower. And these are known because they have butterfly-like petals. So they're kind of really pretty. So pretty cool. And also a side fact, like flowers are always really colorful and pretty. And some of the reason they are colorful is that so pollinators like bees can find them. And also different birds like hummingbirds, they use the pollen and they, they transport the pollen around. They also like the colors too. And certain creatures like certain colors and see different colors better than others. So they will gravitate towards that color that they can see and they like. So that's super fascinating about flowers. Um, they're not just something that we see and enjoy, of course, that's wonderful too, but they have lots of different purposes too. 
So I'm gonna, I have a very uh, small little activity for you to do. I'm gonna move this type of book that I was looking at um, out of the way. And I'm also gonna give you some book suggestions because I always do like giving you those. But I'm gonna move the screen a little bit down so that you can see what I'm doing. And for this activity, you really, really don't need a lot, uh, which is great. So you're going to need, I'm gonna push these a little side too so that I don't fill my vase of flowers with water. Um, you're gonna need like a paper plate. Um, I just use an old paper plate, or if you have a piece of cardboard or something, you're gonna use some paint, just a regular old acrylic paint um, will work best. I know some of you probably have watercolors. You probably wanna use acrylic. You do not need a lot of paint. You can see I was working on this last night. Just a little bit, you can always add more. I always say, you, know, you can always add more. You're gonna need a pen. I'm using a Sharpie, but you could really use any marker that you have. Um, a brand new pencil. So you don't want a pencil that's sharpened because you don't want to point, put, poke yourself, sorry, poke yourself on this activity. And you want the eraser, one with a brand new eraser as well. Okay. And some masking tape or scotch tape, whatever you have. And let's see, a pair of scissors. Okay. And also, can't forget what we're actually painting on. <laughs> if you want to cover your surface too, that might be a good idea because we are going to be using paint. And if you want to wear like an old shirt or a smock, I would recommend that too. So you're also going to use um, a piece of paper. I use like, this is just an old piece of cardboard. It came with something. I usually save those for crafts and things. Um, so that's a great choice. But if you only have a regular piece of paper, that's fine. Um, and then last but not least, if you have one, if you've gone to the craft store um, and you have just a plain uh, tote bag, this is just a canvas bag. They sell them at big box stores sometimes. They sell them in craft stores. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, one of those. If you don't have one, don't worry. You could ask your grown up for a piece of paper or another piece of cardboard or something and you could do this craft um, activity on, on anything you have. So you're gonna start with your piece of paper like so. And you're just going to draw a simple flower and let me see if I can move this down so you can see this a little better. There we go. You won't be able to see all of my face, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to draw a simple flower. I'm going to start with a circle in the middle of the page like so. And then I'm just going to draw petals like so. Okay. I tend to, when I draw flowers, I tend to move my paper around like so and keep drawing my petals. It just works for me to move paper, it's up to you. And some of you can um, probably draw other flowers like a tulip or you can even try to draw one of the geraniums, um, draw whatever you would like, but kind of keep your shape kind of chunky and bold like so. Okay, simple outline of a flower. And what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut that out. Just for time, I've already done that. And what I've also done is I've taken a piece of tape like so, and I've just balled it up and put it on the back like that, okay? That's gonna hold it in place for my bag, okay? So you're gonna lay your bag out flat. I have a, a plastic bag. It's the plastic bag that my bag came in. That's like a tongue twister bag and bag. Um, but I put that it, in it, um, or if you have like another piece of cardboard, you'd probably wanna put it in. That's just in case the paint bleeds through the canvas so it doesn't go on the back side. Um, especially if you want to do both, both sides and make it pretty. This is a great idea for um, a gift. If you're looking for a gift, maybe somebody's birthday is coming up this summer and um, this makes a great, great gift. I know uh, my boys did this one year for Valentine's Day with heart shapes and they made bags for um, their grandmothers. So, and they loved them. So, okay, ready? So this is super, super simple. This is, um, I always tell you all, paint with what you have. If you don't have a paintbrush, just go for it and use what you have. So you're going to use the end of your, your pencil. Like I said, please, please, please use an unsharpened pencil with this. Um, and then you're just going to dip it into your paint like so. And I'm not getting a lot of paint on this. I'm even gonna actually kind of paint like this. This is, this is the technique. You're just making dots and you're gonna go around the outline of your flower. And you can see I don't right away dip the eraser back into the paint because I want to kind of see the shading. Do you see it? Like so. Okay, I'm gonna do a little more and then I'll show you again what I'm talking about. So you're just gonna go all around the edge 
with your, your dots made with your eraser and your paint, like so. And that's kind of neat because when you do this, you can see kind of the texture if you use the canvas on that as well. It comes out kind of neat. And I sometimes go back and do like a darker shade in the middle, a stamp. It's kind of like stamping. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna show this and so you can see it. Okay, do you see how that's coming out? Do you see if I, let me see if I, if I move it, you're gonna see it like so. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way around your flower like that, um, continuing with the dot technique and the paint. Um, you're going to lay it flat and let it dry. I'm gonna take my screen this again. Okay, so you wanna make sure that it dries. I'm gonna show you what it looks like finished. I did one last night, it's already dry on the back um, just because of time, but at home, continue with this. And this is what it's gonna look like in the back. So super cute, maybe you go to the farmer's market um, and pick up some fresh fruit and vegetables and maybe you get some fresh flowers and this would be a great bag to take to that and fill with lots of flowers and goodies. So. There you go, tote bag. So as I promised, I have some great book suggestions for you. So let me pull those out. Move my, this definitely needs to get planted tonight. Now that we've been talking about flowers so much, I actually can't wait to garden a little bit tonight. Maybe I can convince my children to help me. Wouldn't that be fun? Would you garden with your, your parents, your grown up? Yep, okay, great. Maybe with grandma or an aunt or uncle you garden, so fun. So to learn a little bit more about flowers, because I know this is a really short class, we have uh, flowers explore nature with fun facts and activities. And this is by David Burney. It's produced by DK Publishing. As you know, is one of my favorite publishing companies. I, I, I love their books. Um, this explains all different types of flowers, um, even flowers found near the sea. So the next time you're at the ocean, see, I'm gonna show you this picture. So that's the seashore flowers page, really beautiful. The photography in this book is really stunning too. Um, and you can see that there's also different flower, uh, flower activities. Like here's one about making potpourri, which is like a smelly dried mix of flowers. That also makes a really nice gift. So that's flowers. Then we have the Usborn Gardening for Beginners. And that's by Emily Bone and Abigail Wheatley. And if you do want to try gardening and you want to try to have that green thumb, um, this is a great book. It's got easy to follow um, directions. It's a great little guidebook. Um, they show, I'll show you a couple of pictures. Um, the equipment, this is the equipment page. So some tools that you're going to need to garden. Uh, you probably, maybe one of your grownups has some of those to use. Always ask first before you use your grownups things, please. Um, and remember we were talking about geraniums and they're my favorite to plant because they're very forgiving and uh, grow really great. There's a whole page about growing geraniums. So that is gardening for beginners. Love the, co the cover even, it's beautiful. Then we have, this book is incredible. I actually just discovered this book. Um, when I was researching our book suggestions and I absolutely love this book. It's The Big Book of Balloons by Yovel Zumer. I hope I said his Zomer, Zomer, I hope I said the, the name correctly. Um, beautiful, beautiful illustrations in this book. Um, the author not only wrote this, but he did the illustrations as well. As well. And I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek because I want you to check this book out. Of course, all of these titles are available at Howard County Library System. You can make an appointment and come in and see us and check these out, or you can um, even request them as a whole. So this is the title page. And do you notice what the flowers are coming out of? A book, of course. I love this page. This is so gorgeous. I'm gonna show you another page. Just like I said, this book is just incredible. Like, so remember we were talking about the parts of a flower? There we go. Stunning, stunning, stunning book. Um, also, just real quickly, I won't go over too much on this, but I thought this was another um, great book if you want to learn more about flowers and plants and things. This is Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds, a visual encyclopedia of the plant kingdom. And this is brought to us by DK and the Smithsonian Institute, which we know is right here in Washington, D.C. So that's another gorgeous book. So 
All of these are your parents should have been emailed them with the class link, um, or you can just always go on our website and search these up and put them on hold. So while your grown up is on that website, make sure they sign you up for the next Seen Saturday because I can't wait to see you again. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you get to find some flowers either on a walk or in your garden today. And now you know a little bit more about flowers. So thanks for joining us today. Take care. Bye-bye.